to answer your question, the reason my world is always incentivized in innovating is because I don't build structures that incentivize short-term KPIs. Because when you're incentivizing short-term KPIs, you become too oriented on the transaction. And I'm a salesman, so I understand the energy in this room. The hell, like, you, you know, you might not even be, you know, don't forget, I also own and operate all my own businesses. I'm not publicly traded, I'm not trying to sell them. So I am giving a lot of care to 17 years from now. I can't ask that of my employees or of any of you, you know? How many people here are retiring within the next 17 years? Raise your hand. We'll talk. You know, tough for me to say, hey, I really need you to give a shit about the next 17 years from now. Tough to ask that. So for us, it's easy. My religion is also day trading attention. I think the only (coughs) thing that, of course, uh, I think the only thing that matters in the world is who's the best at gardening attention. The end. There's no other currency. It's how the whole world's always worked. I was born in the Soviet Union before I immigrated here. And I'm 47 years old, so I grew up in Jersey in the 80s, very captivated by the Cold War, because that's where I was born, but this is where I was growing up. And I was also a pretty poor student because I was really a purebred entrepreneur, but the one class I was good at was history. And now I understand why. I was interested in pattern recognition. When there's a coup in a country, at the same time the army or whoever's doing the coup is going to the palace to get the guy, they'll go into the radio station, the newspaper, and the TV station to control the message. All of the anxiety and unrest we all have in our country and in geopolitics right now is because communication has changed. We've gone away from the big platforms owning it, hence the governments, and now we have decentralization of communication. Mr. Beast couldn't be a threat to Hershey's. Logan Paul couldn't be a threat to Gatorade. You know, the influencer that I'm most worried about for you in the next five years couldn't be a threat to you because they didn't have enough scale to compete with you. You didn't have enough scale to compete with P&G and Unilever at that level. Now a single human can screw you all up because she can reach everyone for nothing, zero. She doesn't have to run commercials, right? And she doesn't need the retailer. She doesn't need Walmart. Walmart is taking your money to give to people like her, to seduce her to come into the store because they need her. Shit's changed. And I think the energy I'm trying to bring to this meeting is we don't have the luxury of believing we're fast. You're slow. I'm coming here with one agenda the deep hope that the energy of the conversation makes you go faster and makes you go realer. We can't waste money. You are not in a position, I know this business well enough and the competitive set, you are not in the position to waste one penny on marketing. And so that's what day trading attention is for me. What's the underpriced influencer? What's the underpriced platform? Last week TikTok worked like this, today it works like that. What creative works there? Why is organic social media the most important thing in business, yet nobody's looking at it? Because everyone thinks it's an afterthought and a nice to have when it is the foundation of the competitors that are eating up the ecosystem. Sally in Atlanta didn't start with a $40 million budget. She posted on TikTok and it went viral. You need to do that. I was in New Jersey in Union, New Jersey, at a Chamber of Commerce event in 1997 that looked pretty similar to the room I'm in right now. And I said, we were talking about this thing that they wanted me to talk about called the World Wide Web. (laughs) And I gave my spiel the way I'm giving it now and with the same level of conviction and the same Jersey mouth (laughs) and somebody raised their hand and said, Gary, but I was explaining like finding, you know, this was early web, there's some kids in here, like for some of us that are a little bit over 45, like the internet was like, what is this? Like it was like crazy. Kind of like the way you may feel about AI now, like it's something, but how, what? And I was talking about a directory, like search, like, you know, find, like if you remember for the OGs, the internet used to mainly be referred to as the information superhighway. It was predominantly known as a place to go get information and now it's obviously the foundation of society. Anyway, I gave my spiel and a guy raised his hand and goes, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. He said, Gary, if I, I was talking about if you needed to find a plumber in Jersey. He goes, if I need to find a plumber 
I'm gonna go to the yellow pages. <laughs> and, I, and I said, for now, but you won't. And he laughed and most of the people in the room laughed until they didn't. And so AI, we're in a different place because now we have 25 years of technology and everyone here who laughed at the internet, who laughed at email, who laughed at the iPhone, who laughed at social media is like kind of understanding that they're wrong. And so none of you right now are completely dismissive of AI. Instead, we're now on the other side of the pillow. We're fearful of it. Is it gonna take my job? Are the robots gonna kill my kids? Like, you know, we've, we've turned it into fear instead of audacity. The answer to the question is AI is gonna do for us what the tractor did for us when 80% of us in the world worked on a farm. There was a day when 80% of the human beings on earth worked on a farm. And then the tractor was invented and allowed us to do other things. AI is going to allow us to do other things. We are gonna be able to do work that used, I can make a deck in three minutes. And that used to cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars in employees in three weeks. Now, the question becomes what happens to those employees? They'll do other things. You know, this is what they said. I mean, the car was debated heavily. Electricity, my friends, I don't know how many people like history. Electricity was demonized aggressively by humans. Most people claim that it was demons running through your house. So, basically what I'm, I just need, even the people that are retiring in the next 17 years, all of you will be affected by AI for the rest of your life and in great ways. Like, it will do your taxes for you and you don't have to pay an accountant the money and it will actually be right and you'll get your full tax credits and it'll take two minutes. That's good, right? And, and the way you sit here and say, really? Is the same way that people sat 100 years ago that I can go to Australia within the day and that used to take a month. The world's moving. Innovation doesn't stop in our lifetime. And AI will be one of the most profound things that you ever see in your life. And it will completely change all our lives. However, this company at this moment should spend zero minutes on it. Maybe a little bit for internal, maybe decks to each other to be a little faster. We need to talk about the first stop. This company needs to figure out how to be more relevant to more customers at scale within the money that it has to become a defense mechanism to the infrastructure of how their product is sold. Marketing is the only way out. What, so what are some of the big mistakes you see companies make with social media? Not understanding how much science is behind it. The science behind the art. You know, I post my content, my personal posts on LinkedIn are scheduled to the exact minute. Like I will post on LinkedIn at 9.07 a.m. because more people will see it than if I post it at 9.06 and 9.08 and nobody thinks about that stuff. I think about the first three seconds. I think about the creative, I, all I think about is how the algorithms work to give me more reach to what I want. And then I layer human psychology, and then I layer my business objectives, and then I layer that Kelsey and Taylor Swift are dating and how can I use that, <laughs> you know, pop culture. And so, you know, I'm playing a game of ingredients. I'm using pop culture, I'm using platform reality, I'm using science, I'm using best practices, I'm using human behavior, I'm using business reality. Uh, so, the level, to, again, the hardest thing in the world to do, in the world, in marketing, and I do it all, is social media creative. And yet, it is deemed the easiest by every organization. Uh -huh. And when, what I mean by that, I mean it's the thing that most people don't actually really care about. This is where you can outflank your competitors. Your direct competitors, the biggest companies, many of that we work with, will take more seriously a 30 second commercial and spend more money on the catering of that 30 second commercial and the T&E of that 30 second commercial than they'll spend on their entire year on social. Which is why they're all so reliant on influencers. Because they don't know how to do it. And so my big take is that people, marketers, business people, sales people like ourselves, will go to a dinner table and we will have conversations about social media if we do, on two fronts. One, how it's ruining the country. Two, how it's ruining our children, All right? So general conversation amongst people is they will literally have dinner conversations with gusto on how powerful this platform is that it's ruining 
or how scared you are of it, what it's doing to the politics, what it's doing to politicians, what it's doing to the country, what it's doing to your children. You will sit there the whole time on, the, on Saturday night with your best friends or your relatives and then you'll come in Monday morning and you'll look at it as the least most important thing in your marketing mix. I've literally had CEOs of companies who I do business with, especially when a lot of stuff was going on three or four years ago in America, and they would yell at me for 10 minutes about how bad social media was because it's put democracy on the brink of its knees. And then we would switch over to business once we were done with our opening cocktail and letting that person rant, and they would then explain to me how social media can't sell their product the way that print can. And I was like, let me get this straight. Social media is powerful enough to put democracy on its knees, but it can't sell lipstick? Get the hell out of here.